and continuing with the um, uh, importance for the thoracic cage in terms of uh, movement of the upper limbs, as we'll see when we get to the appendicular skeleton, that the entire upper limb, your arms and the shoulder blade, articulate and meet the axial skeleton at one point here on the sternum, right about here. Your shoulder blade just floats basically on the back of your rib cage, and your um, shoulder joint is between your upper arm humerus and the scapula, the shoulder blade, and that joint is not part of the axial skeleton. One reason why you can move your arm around so much is because there's only one site of articulation with that upper limb and the uh, sternum of the thoracic cage. So let's look at the sternum. It has three parts, three parts or regions. The manubrium, the superior portion, it articulates with the clavicles right in this little area, the clavicular notch. And it also articulates with the first pair of ribs, actually the cartilage of the first pair of ribs. And then this jugular notch is what you can actually feel with your finger if you kind of depress it down there. It's, uh, you can feel that jugular notch quite readily and then move your fingers over laterally to feel where your clavicles meet the manubrium at that clavicular notch. Uh, inferior to the manubrium is the fairly long body and articulates with the cartilages of the ribs two through seven. And at the far inferior end, there's the xiphoid process. It attaches to the diaphragm, <clears throat> excuse me, and the rectus abdominis, abdominis muscle that you use when you say you do um, sit-ups. There's that jugular notch, okay? So let's move on to the ribs or the costae. You have 12 pair of these long curved flat bones actually. This is kind of a somewhat posterior view. The head of this rib would articulate with the two costal facets of those two vertebra. And then this Tubercle articulates with the costal facet <clears throat> on the transverse process of the vertebral column. And then the vertebra kind of goes out laterally. Sorry, the rib kind of goes out laterally and then swings forward. And at the anterior end of the body, the sternal end with um, cartilage, this articulates with the sternum, at least with uh, most of the ribs. So pairs one through seven are true ribs. They're referred to as vertebrosternal, and they connect to the sternum via their cartilage, hence vertebrosternal, because the rib articulates these ribs with the vertebral column and the sternum directly. Pairs eight through 10, so as we're moving down, pairs eight through 10 are referred to as false ribs because they have cartilages that fuse together before that cartilage contacts the sternum. So those ribs, pairs eight, nine, and 10 are called vertebral chondral. Vertebral because they do articulate with the <clears throat> thoracic vertebrae, but chondral because anteriorly their cartilages fuse before it reaches the sternum. And then lastly, the most inferior pair, 11 and 12, are called the floating ribs. Uh, they have no attachment to the sternum. They just kind of end about here and here. Uh, but they do articulate, of course, uh, posteriorly with the um, thoracic vertebra. And that's it for chapter six. Okay.